How's it going everyone? This is MedCat and I'm going to be here with my first video of 2021, so that's pretty exciting. I recently just got a comment from someone asking me to cover specific gravity, which I'm very happy to do because specific gravity is actually a fairly simple concept at the end of the day. So let's jump right into it. Ultimately, specific gravity is a measurement of density. Specifically, it is a measurement of relative density. So the relative density part we'll get to, but it actually doesn't have any units when we write out the specific gravity. So I want to pose the question, what exactly is so specific about it? Well, it is specific to the density of water for the MCAT. Now, sometimes people use specific gravity in reference to things other than water, but for the MCAT, we are mostly going to be focusing, in fact, probably exclusively, just on water. Now, that begs the question, what is the density of water? And that is a very good question to be asking, because that is something you will definitely need to know for test day. Now, one of the ways we can write the density of water is very commonly one gram per milliliter which is also equivalent to one gram per centimeter cubed. So these are pretty interchangeable as the milliliter and centimeter cubed are equivalent in terms of volume. Now, another common one that you're gonna see is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And finally, one that's not often memorized, but you really should for the MCAT is one kilogram per liter. So these are all different ways we can write the density of water. But specific gravity, its formula, is going to be whatever density of a substance we have. And what I just wrote there is the Greek letter rho. So that's the Greek letter rho, R-H-O. Don't call it P because it's actually a Greek letter. So the rho of our substance or the density of our substance divided by the density or rho of water. And rho can be any of these densities that I've written in the form to the right. So SG, therefore, must be unitless. And that is because the units will cancel out. So if we use, let's say, for the density of water grams per milliliter, we want to measure the density of our substance also in grams per milliliter. Now finally, if our SG is less than 1, that necessarily means our substance is less dense than water. Now if our SG is greater than 1, that just means it will be more dense than water. And finally, as you may have guessed, if our SG is equivalent to, oops, not zero, equivalent to one, it will be identical to that of water. In fact, it probably is water or an aqueous solution at the very least, if we have a specific gravity of one of the substance that we are looking at. So that is specific gravity in a nutshell. It is a measurement of relative density of something compared to the density of water. Now, before we end, I want to cover a brief, very brief, organic chemistry application of specific gravity. And that's particularly going to be in extractions, where we're measuring, or not really measuring, but utilizing the density or differences in density or relative densities to separate out mixtures in a solution especially when we're trying to isolate our product from contaminants in organic chemistry lab. So you may remember doing this um, kind of extraction process by either shaking something up and waiting for it to settle or shaking it up and waiting for it to settle and then using something called a separatory funnel to actually separate those layers out. But I want to pose a question to you looking at this beaker I've drawn here. We have an organic layer and an aqueous layer in kind of the solution that we've isolated in organic chemistry lab. What is the specific gravity of the organic layer going to be? Is it going to be SG greater than one? 
sg equal to 1 or sg less than 1. So you can probably answer that right away. If not, pause the video, take a moment to think about it. So hopefully you've thought about it a little bit, and it should be clear that the sg should be actually less than 1 because it is floating on top of water. Therefore, it is less dense than this aqueous or watery layer. So remember, aqueous coming from that root word of aqua, meaning water, means watery. So something dissolved in water. So SG will be less than 1. And of course, if we had an SG greater than 1, our organic layer would be below the aqueous layer. And if our SG was 1, there would be no way to separate them based on density. That's it for today's MedCat video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.